but don't worry about things like precision. What I'm trying to do is to make sure that every mark I make is a direct and honest response to who's in front of me. Each mark is also not just drawing what I see, which is fundamental. But it's also, to a certain extent, drawing what I'm experiencing, what I'm feeling. There's a symmetry in the journey of Scottish artist Mark Gilbert. Nearly 20 years ago, Mark passed through Omaha with an international tour of his landmark exhibition, Saving Faces, which featured arresting portraits of patients before, during, and after dramatic and sometimes disfiguring facial surgeries. To be showing in this space, especially in this space, because this is where it all started with me in Omaha. So I'd never been here before. Um, and so, so it's lovely to be back here. Now, Mark is a professor of medical humanities at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, where the first exhibit took place. Still an artist, he continues to do portraiture. This work is part of a study exploring the experiences of frontline healthcare workers across the country. I often talk about the sort of vulnerability that there is on both sides of the, the easel when you're working on these portraits. I've worked with people who know that they're in the last weeks of their life. I've worked with people who are caring for people who they know are terminally ill and so on. And I've never worked with people who are so, that their emotions were so on the surface and so raw. They broke down in a way that had never happened with anybody else I've ever worked with in the last 20 years. You know, they were working crazy hours. They were working with uncertain, huge uncertainties about the care that they were able to deliver for the patients they were working with, about their own well-being, about when is this going to end, about am, am I going to infect the people I care for, my family, my children. Mark has probably had a dozen sessions with nurse practitioner Sarah Lane during the past few years, even during the height of the COVID pandemic. And I remember after my first meeting with Mark, we talked about a lot of things that I hadn't ever really maybe like tapped into. <laughs> and so I remember going home and just like being like exhausted. It brought on so many emotions of just overall sadness for the patients and, you know, my coworkers and, and the struggle that, you know, we were all having. That's what really prompted a lot of the, you know, why I continued to come back because I just knew that this was important. People will ask me about it and I can't really answer it. <laughs> like in my head, I know, you know, what it was about and what it did for me, but it's hard to, um, to share that with other people, to put it to words. I'm not an art therapist. I don't do these pictures to make people feel better, but often it does. So, and when that happens, we recognize that and record it, and I'm pleased. Even in silence, there can be a therapeutic dialogue. As Gilbert's most recent exhibit involving dementia patients in Halifax, Nova Scotia, reveals. It took me years to, to properly recognize this, that that silence isn't an empty void. There's a huge amount of communication that happens in that silence. There's a huge amount of expression, um, either you know, with us both looking at each other. And the drawing facilitates that, facilitates the, the, the relationship building. When we think about people with dementia, sometimes we end up thinking that they've kind of lost so much that they have nothing left to give that they've lost the capacity to be productive or to be purposeful. But hopefully the exhibition is able to allow people to really engage and be, maybe even re-engage with that notion that people who are living with dementia still have an amazing sense of personhood. There still are things that nourish them. There are still things that bring joy. Every frame is a window into a deeply private world. We don't often see this depicted in art. Yeah. You know, that there's a veil across that, that chapter of life that I think that your, that your work helps to lift. Yeah. 
Gerontology professor Dr. Chris Kelly says the lives of older adults are often overlooked. Our last days were spent among family and friends, those who were closest to us. The rest of the world is kind of outside of that veil. What Mark has done with this exhibit is pulled back that veil and to show us the beauty of life in, in that penultimate chapter and to have a better understanding of just what individuals are going through. The feelings, the fears, the many emotions that they are experiencing. Art and literature and music and, and everything that the creative world is about is a part of our lives from, from our earliest memory to, to our last moments on Earth. And that lifelong education doesn't stop. And, and I think that for the subjects of, of Mark's paintings, I think that they were aware that they, are, they were participating in, in something incredible, that they're participating in uh, the education and the understanding of, of people of all ages, well, what it means to be human. So this was a PCS, so it was done in 1992. And so it's just kind of typical of the kind of drawings that my dad would do. For, you know, prior to every single painting that he did, he always did a series and we all had to sit for him. You know, I had to pose for him. Mark's own mom had Alzheimer's and died of a stroke before this project began. It's called the chair, but I think I always call it the empty chair. So it is the empty chair. It's the chair that my mom sat in. So again, it's that testament to bereavement and to loss. This is the first time Mark's work has hung side by side with his dad's. Both of his parents were artists. They met at the Glasgow School of Art in the 1950s. It wasn't unusual for him to be sitting for me in the morning and I'd be sitting for him in the afternoon. When, this is when I was, we were in Glasgow. So, um, so these pictures are kind of unique in as much as they picture my mum on, on her own. When Mark's mom, Pat, was in her final days, his father, Norman, made these drawings of her. I was staggered that he was doing them, frightened to look at them. You know, I didn't want to look at them. And I remember he asked me about two or three times, do you want to see them? And I said, no, not yet. And then when I saw them, I loved them, you know. I, and, and, and again, it kind of forced me to come from behind the easel. You know, so I kind of was almost like, I became like one of my participants. Those pictures sort of present some of the most traumatic times of my life, and I love them. Norman passed a few years after his wife, Pat, and never had the chance to see these works displayed together. But the drawings serve another purpose, to soften the medical gaze and invite new understandings of the deeply isolated worlds of dementia, death, and dying. The meaning of the pictures doesn't reside with my dad or with my mom or with the, you know, in, with the people in these pictures. You know, the meaning's constantly in flux and so that, you know, the audience, you know, bring their own meanings, bring their own experience to the pictures. For me as a son, they've taught me more about the healing power of art than anything else I've ever experienced. 